Hello, uh, my name is uh, Matthijs. Uh, here's some uh, data about me. Um, I lead a pen testing team at Nixu. Uh, on Twitter, I go by the name Alcyon Security. And uh, I coined the, the hashtag Ditch Cyber together with uh, Meneer, who is also a colleague of mine. Um, this talk was supposed to be about uh, handling a, a case of, uh, of ransomware. But uh, since uh, you're all developers here, I thought it would be nice to give a different twist and uh, look uh, to a piece of ransomware from a customer perspective and uh, see uh, how the developers, uh, yeah, uh, how well they write the software. So we're not going to talk about the incident response process. We are not going uh, to talk about the preparation. So how do we prepare for uh, ransomware? No, we're not going to do that. No, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, how do you identify ransomware? Usually that's uh, quite obvious. Uh, you try to open your documents and uh, uh, they are encrypted. And, and it doesn't work anymore the way you expect, expect it. Ah, we're not going to talk about that. I'm talking uh, about... No, no, no. skipping all, all this. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, uh, ransomware as, uh, from the perspective of a consumer. So ransomware, yeah, that's uh, basically a piece of software you, uh, you purchase or, uh, well, you actually it's a kind of freemium uh, software. So you get it for free, you install it by clicking uh, on the link, probably you shouldn't, and it uh, encrypts your stuff. And yeah, the, the, that's fine because uh, um, you can travel to countries uh, uh, abroad and uh, if you uh, if border control stops you and they try to image your hard drive, all your stuff is encrypted. That's a good thing. But um, when you want to retrieve these files, yeah, that's why you start paying. So usually they have a nice uh, help desk, or you send an email and say, "Hey, I want my files back," and they ask you to uh, to pay some bitcoins or whatever cryptocurrency, and you get your files back. Right? Uh, maybe. This is an example of, uh, of ransomware for, uh, for corporate environments. That's also available. Um, well, I'm telling you about my shitty experience, actually. So I try to, uh, to open a file. And what happens? It tries to open it as a DOS application. Well, what happens here? So apparently, this uh, this piece of uh, ransomware um, uh, appended some string ending in .com, an email address. Yeah, for those <laughs> old enough uh, to know, uh, a com file is an executable file uh, that dates back to the DOS age. So, okay, well, so it renamed my files, and. Well, it's obviously not executable, so what the hell? Usually when uh, yeah, you have some nice ransomware that drops you a ransom note in a nice uh, graphical form, but this one didn't. So it ha actually, I had a very bad UI experience here. Well, um, for, uh, as far as features go, yeah, it seems solid. AS256 uh, bit encryption, sounds good. Um, so what do I need to do if I want my files back? Okay, I send an email, and it says, very important, we re recommend to write, e email us with Gmail or Yahoo address. Why? Otherwise, your email may not reach us. Check the spam folder, probably our response mail is in that. Okay. Um, and uh, an, uh, another warning here, do not try to decrypt files by third-party deciphers, otherwise you will spoil files. Okay, so I should use your original product, right? 
So that's what I, uh, I did. I emailed uh, the guys. Uh, apparently, I, I had to take a look at the file because the .com obviously was an email uh, address. So I emailed them, and what do you think? Message not delivered. So I was here with these encrypted files, um, pretty much disappointed. Um, it did a good job. Uh, usually, you expect your ransomware to uh, enumerate your drives and uh, encrypt your hard disk, encrypt your USB media, etc. But what if you have a uh, network mapping? Oh, that's where it started to encrypt uh, the department uh, file share as well. Ouch. So. <sighs> Without the ransomware support team, yeah, w what do we do? Well, this is, was a, a, a particular piece of ransomware where no public de de decryptors uh, are available. And besides, they do not want you to use it because you might spoil your file. So, okay, what do we do? Resort to the backup. So first, try to find out what uh, files are encrypted. So it should be easy. All files end with uh, the email address, so that's appended to the original file name. Uh, to do that quickly and to be able to, uh, to, um, to redirect that to a file, so I have a nice listing, I use the good old dir command, which is uh, slash s for uh, recursing into uh, subfolders. I want all the files, so hidden files as well. And it shows me that 924 files are encrypted. Okay. Challenge accepted. But what it did is in, uh, in File Explorer in Windows, it found 954 files. <coughs> That's weird. When I did this in PowerShell, I found nine, 924 files again. So what the hell is going on here? Uh, luckily, PowerShell gives some more information what's really going on. So it, uh, it, it raises this uh, nice uh, exception that the fully qualified file name must be less than 260 characters and the directory name must be less than 20, 48 characters. Okay, we are living in 2017 and we, have still this, we still have this restriction. NTFS file system supports uh, 32K uh, of uh, file paths, so wh why? Well, if you dig deep into uh, MSDN, you can find this uh, little piece. And there it is explained. So the Windows File I.O., the standard, standard Windows File I.O. Uh, API functions only support 260 characters in a path name. Okay, but this ransomware was able to encrypt my files, right? So how the hell did it, that work? Um, okay, here's a little explanation about why the 260, that sounds strange. We are always uh, used to counting uh, in binary, so uh, exponents of two are familiar. But that is back to the DOS era as well. So you have uh, a data structure with a drive letter, a colon, a backslash, that counts for three. And the path, yes, that's a familiar uh, power of, uh, of two, exponents of two. And of course, uh, the trailing, no. So I was kind of confused why this ransomware successfully encrypted my files. However, how did it do that? And why can I, can't I access these files using my file explorer? Well, actually, this is what happens. So when uh, when your computer is connected to a network and it performs drive mapping, that artificially shortens your full, uh, file path. So when you take a look on your file server, 
you still have this uh, this long file path, and that's where it exceeds the 260 character limit. Okay, well, to the rescue, uh, good old dot. Yes, there. I don't know how many of you still know this command. Uh, nobody apparently. <laughs> and this gentleman has white hair, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, bold, bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the the sub command can be used to uh, to that create a local mapping for, for directories. And okay, we're bus in business again. We can map a folder to a drive letter. We can use our good old dir command. And yes, we can find our, our files. Okay, all good, right? Um, not really. Still missing some files and some, uh, some errors. And it seems that as an administrator on a file share, you not always have the correct file permissions to access these files. Why is that? Yeah, all, all comes the joy of uh, a discretionary access control list that uh, people can set their own file permissions and uh, can add explicit denies to whatever they whomever they want. Uh, so, okay. It's interesting, how are we going to access these or restore these files? Um, iCackles is, uh, is a nice DOS command. I don't know, Ooh. Yeah, again, well, this is a, a, a newer command, actually. I, uh, it has been introduced in Windows 2003 or something, or I don't know. Um, so you can use this command to take ownership of uh, files, and there you go. You can delete them, replace them with your backup files, whatever you want. But uh, painfully, this iCackles command, iCalc, no, iCackle, sorry. Um, this is also affected by that same 260 character <laughs> limitation. Okay, we covered that already with subs, so we'll be fine. Right, there's another uh, uh, nice utility, which some of you might be familiar with, and that's Robocopy. Now we can actually achieve the same thing without worrying about path lengths, because it supports a full 32K uh, file path. And that's because it's using a more modern uh, variation of the Windows File I.O. API. Uh, that's for supporting Unicode. Yeah, as you know, Unicode will double your your string size. So yeah, <laughs> it would be very shitty if your file path should be reduced to 128 uh, characters. So uh, Robocopy is uh, pretty neat, so you can use that. It has uh, some additional benefits. So wait. it has some additional benefits uh, because you actually can use the backup writes. So um, if you're an administrator and you throw these backup writes uh, in, uh, into the battle, you can even write files that, you, that um, are shielded by regular file permissions. So that's actually pretty nice. So you don't have to do the take ownership and stuff. People are always scared when you, as an administrator, take ownership of files. So you should, uh, in this case, you aren't scared to use. Uh, what if we combine PowerShell and Robocopy? Yeah, there's obviously someone smarter than me that already did that. Um, and it, this is a pretty neat script that you can use to exactly do this. Copy files, pull files, uh, without the, the, the 260 character restriction. So, it's time to, uh, to re rebuild our system. Uh, I already told you just a part of uh, the files. Of obviously, only the interesting doc documents are encrypted, so the, the ransomware skips executables and so on. So, uh, it doesn't want to re ruin your computer 
because, well, if you start encrypting uh, uh, executable files, uh, there's a good chance that your computer doesn't work anymore. So they skip these. So uh, ransomware usually encrypts your Word documents, your Excel uh, files, your family photos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in this case, we are talking about uh, the file share, so the department file share, so other people are relying to that as well. So, yeah, people are very stressed out. And um, the good news, there was a backup, and it was one day old. Okay. It was a full backup, with, uh, one terabyte uh, of data, more than 100,000 files. Okay. I challenge you, do you know a um, backup solution that you can feed a list of files to serve as a selection? Any, any takers? To selectively restore files? No? Ah, I thought so. I couldn't find one where <laughs> when I needed it. So. Um, so we have to restore, and we don't want to overwrite untouched files. So what options do you have? Yeah, uh, of course, this is an offsite backup. Everybody, every organization should do an offsite backup. Uh, but uh, howling one terabyte of data across a network, even if you have a pretty neat WAN connection, is a challenge. So even with a 40 megabits uh, WAN connection, it took, should take more than 35 hours to restore. Not ideal. Um, well, if uh, your backup is uh, stored in the vicinity, perhaps you can do the restore offsite as well and ship the and ship a hard drive to your file uh, server and then restore locally. And that should be doable throughput about twenty five megabytes per second. And that takes four hours. That's much more acceptable. Uh, so your hard drive came in. And guess what? They restored on a fat partition. Uh-oh. The files, OK, the, the contents are all right, but we don't have the file permission set on these. Here we go again. So I told you this uh, presentation is about a series of, of unfortunate events, and that's exactly what happens. Ah, fortunately, Microsoft to the rescue again. So with this iCackles tool I described earlier, it's possible to store all your file permissions into a separate file and import that on a different, well, similarly looking file system. So th basically, this is what you do on your uh, on your encrypted uh, file share. It stores uh, the file permissions, and hopefully everything is fine when we, after the restore, we apply these permissions again. Okay, after this exercise, a little bit more than five hours later, still the co-workers that use the uh, de uh, department share complaint, we have these files that we cannot open. Is it a com file? No, it is not. Uh, wait. This is what happened. So the ransomware was able to, uh, to encrypt the file in place, so it opens the file, writes some garbage. It doesn't do the full encryption because it takes too long, so they overwrite one or two uh, K of uh, worth of bytes, move on to the next. Uh, wait, before moving on to the next, they append the nice email address. But in particular cases, you exceed this 260 character limit. Ah. 
how are we going to find these needles in a haystack? I don't know. I didn't get any response from the service desk, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, so we have a huge uh, haystack with uh, a mix of uh, legitimately edited files and encrypted files. So yes, uh, I hear you thinking you can filter on, uh, on uh, the file modification uh, timestamp. Yeah, you still have a few thousand uh, files and I don't, I don't like uh, manually trying to open them. So I came up with something. As I told you, this particular piece of uh, ransomware, which, uh, by the way, is called uh, uh, an Indian. It was Indian for monkey robber or something. Bandarchor. I learned that from an uh, uh, Indian administrator who was. Uh, uh, obviously, outsourced. Uh, uh, well, uh, she was working for an outsourcing company that took care of uh, this uh, infrastructure. So uh, I'm not drawing any conclusions here. Um, so I, ca I came up with uh, with doing a frequency analysis on uh, the files. So simply something like this, and I have to thank. Uh, uh, a guy named Manifestation uh, for this uh, useful code snippet. So a quick copy and paste, and you can uh, do a file. Uh, um, uh, you read in the contents of the file. Uh, take the first uh, 1K, do an entropy analysis on that. And if it's high entropy and the rest of the file is a lower entropy, then you should be reasonably be safe that you have encountered uh, encrypted uh, files. So this way I was finally able to, uh, to, to see if all the files and restore, selectively restore these using the same strategy. So what can we learn from this? At least what, what do we want to uh, the developers of, uh, of the ransomware what, what do I want from them? So please use the Unicode FileIO API. Please, please, please. Especially if you're touching the file name. Uh, I would like a better GUI. So uh, later I, I found the text file and that's not very user friendly, so I don't like it. And please use a proper email infrastructure. So why do I have uh, to create a Gmail account to send them email and otherwise they don't receive it? And their response ends up in my spam folder or not at all? Come on. And yeah, please respond or at least have a mailbox. Well, all jokes aside, uh, when you encounter a, a case of ransomware, of course, uh, there are some lessons learned as well. So it's very important that you know how ransomware works and what artifacts it creates and how you can, um, uh, can identify encrypted files. Um, well, I've described a pretty unconventional recovery strategy. That's because of uh, the backup solution did not really do what it was supposed to do, or at least it was missing a feature where you could selectively uh, restore files. So uh, take into consideration that something like that can happen as well. Uh, for all of you with uh, the snapshot solutions, think about it. That can be a challenge as well. Um, another thing, how can you uh, be notified as soon as, uh, as a file share is in the process of uh, being encrypted? You can uh, uh, put some file share canaries. So 
put some file and enable file system auditing on it, uh, hide it somewhere deep so regular users will not touch it, hide it with all means possible, but uh, potentially the ransomware will touch it, and once it gets touched, you're pretty sure that something is, uh, is amiss. Uh, more has bugs, unfortunately. Uh, so don't count on, uh, on their help desk, but don't count that it always works as designed. And I cannot uh, mention enough backups are very important. Um, that was my story, so it, we have some time for a question. So thank you, Matthijs. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Uh, my question is, how long did it take you to I mean, to do all this workflow from beginning to the end? Uh, Weeks, months, years, that, sorry. That took four days. Yeah. <laughs> four man days. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthijs.